In this lesson, we're going to be looking at sampling distributions. Um, so let's let's uh, let's go back to the very beginning and remember what are we doing here as we met as we uh, we study statistics. Well, we're looking at a population, like let's say the population of the United States. That population has certain parameters. Okay, uh, parameters are uh, things that describe that population. For example, the mean, the mean height of American males, the variance, the variance of the ages of high school students. Okay, remember, mean, that's a type of central tendency. Okay, that's estimating where the center of the distribution is. Variance is estimating how spread out it is. Uh, the standard deviation, which is always just the square root of the variance. And finally, we have here P, which stands for a proportion. This would be a proportion such as, uh, let's say we went out and surveyed people and asked, do you think that uh, we spend too, much, too many tax dollars on the maintenance of, state par of national parks and national forests? All right? Uh, there is some proportion of Americans who believe that. That proportion is P. What is P? I don't know. There are too many Americans for me to actually go out and, uh, and ask them. But there is some proportion. It does actually exist. Now, because there are too many Americans for me to actually go out and ask them, I'm not going to do it. Instead, I'm going to find me a little sample. Okay? A, a small subset of this population. How do I find that sample? Well, very carefully and randomly. Okay? It might be this sample, it might be this sample, it might be this sample, it might be this sample. It might be people taken from all over the place. Really, well, we've looked at data gathering. We know how to find samples. Okay? So, that sample also has numbers that describe it. It has x bar, the sample mean, which is an estimate of the population mean. It has s squared, the sample variance, which is an estimate of the population variance. It has s, the sample standard deviation, which is an estimate of the population standard deviation. And it has p hat, the sample proportion of those people who think we're spending too many tax dollars on the maintenance of national forests and national parks, uh, which would be an estimate of the population proportion of people who think that. Okay? So, um, so that's what we're doing. Okay? Now, remember, I could have taken this sample or that sample or that sample or that. The samples, there's lots and lots of different samples I could take of this particular size, of this size of n people. Maybe it's a thousand people. All right? These statistics here, they're going to change from sample to sample. They're going to vary. They're going to have a distribution. They are random variables. They themselves are random variables. Now, we've looked at several different types of random variables. We've looked at uh, Bernoulli random variables, binomial random variables, geometric random variables, and of course, normal, normally distributed random variables. And uh, so we're going to use those distributions again, as you can well imagine. Uh, each of these statistics, each of these sample statistics, has its own probability model, its probability distribution, and that is what is called a sampling distribution. That's what a sampling distribution is. Okay? So, let's start by looking at the distribution of a sample proportion, okay? This p hat here. Well, first off, let's say I'm, I, I have my, my sample size, I go out and I ask a whole bunch of people, do you believe that the United, that uh, U.S. taxpayers are paying, spending too much of our tax burden on the maintenance of uh, national and national parks and national forests, okay? And I get some number that say yes, okay? That number, X, that's our, that's our, our, our number of successes, okay? As you've probably gathered by now, X is, well, these are Bernoulli trials, right? Every time I ask a person, a person either they say yes, success, or they say no, failure, all right? That's a Bernoulli trial. So, that means x, the sum of all the successes of these Bernoulli trials, is going to have a binomial distribution with uh, uh, a parameters n, that's my sample size, and p, 
the true population proportion, the thing that I'm, I'm wondering what it is. All right? We know from our, our studies of binomial distributions that the expected value of x, that is to say the mean of the di distribution, is n times p. The variance of x is n times p times q. And the standard deviation, I don't know if I've ever said this before, but it's the, the square root of the variance, okay? It's the square root of n times p times q. And we also know that when n is big enough, that is to say when n times p is greater than or equal to 10, and also when n times q is greater than or equal to 10, that x is practically normally distributed. Okay, I say practically because eh, you know, there's, there's a little, little uh, bit off there, but really not much at all. It is practically normally distributed with a mean of NP and a standard deviation of NPQ. Okay? That's all fine and good. However, we're not that interested in X. We're interested in P hat, the sample proportion. Now, what is P hat? How do you, how do you calculate a proportion? Well, you take the number of successes and you divide that by the number of people you asked. In other words, it's going to be x divided by n. Or, I decided to write it, 1 over n times x. Now, if you think back, we also learned that when you multiply a random variable, like x, times a constant, like 1 over n, that you can very, very accurately, well, that you can calculate the mean and variance and standard deviation of this 1 over n times x, okay? So what we find is that the expected value of x is now 1 over n times the, ex the expected value of, uh, uh, this is not the expected value of x, I'm sorry. This is the expected value of p hat. That's what I was trying to write, okay? And uh, because I'm erasing with my fingers, I'm getting really dirty hands. Uh, but the expected value of p hat is 1 over n times the expected value of x. In other words, 1 over n times np. Well, oh, shoot, that's just p. And the variance of p hat is 1 over n squared. Go back, look at your notes, it's true. Times the variance of, uh, of uh, x, which is just going to be... Well, the, one of the n's cancels out there, so that's just going to be pq over n. And the standard deviation of p hat is 1 over n times the square root of npq, or an easier way to do it, take the square root of that guy. It's going to be the square root of pq divided by n. So take pq over n and just take the whole square root of that, and that's what the standard deviation of p hat is. All right. Let's just pause for a second and think about what we're saying here. The, the, the sample proportions, if I go out and I ask this sample and that sample and that sample and that sample and that sample, the sample proportions are all going to have, they're, they're going to be, they're going to vary, okay? They're going to be different. But they're all going to hover right around the true proportion, okay? They're not going to vary that far from the true proportion. And if you take the average of all of those sample proportions, you'll get the true proportion. That's what that says. Okay? The expected value of p hat is p. That's all that's saying. Also, when you think about it, how do you get a lousy estimate and how do you get a really good estimate? Well, you get a lousy estimate by asking just a couple of people. You get a really good estimate by asking a lot of people. Okay? That is to say, we'll be much more confident of our estimate if, we, if n is bigger. Well, much more confident, it means it won't vary so much. That means the standard deviation is going to be smaller. Well, sure enough, the standard deviation is the square root of pq, I can't do anything about p or q, those are, those are set, over n. I can do something about n. I can ask more people. I can make an n, n bigger. The bigger n is, the smaller this, uh, uh, this square root of this fraction is going to be. So that actually makes a lot of sense. All right? So that's the standard deviation of a proportion, of a sample proportion. Now let's look. Oh, we're not, ready, we're not done yet. We also have conditions. Okay? You didn't think you could, get, you could get off without having some conditions in there. First off, none of this works unless our conditions are met. Condition number one, random. Uh, you had to pick those people randomly. The sample had to be a random sample. We've looked at data gathering. 
we know how to find a random sample, okay? It needs to be a simple random sample, because remember what I was saying? I was saying it could be this sample, or this sample, or this sample, or this sample. A simple random sample means any, any sample of size n could have been chosen. So, simple random sample is best. And if not that, stratified, cluster sample, one of the accepted methods. So, that the, that the, uh, the sample was chosen randomly is absolutely paramount. Number two, independence. Okay? Each person you ask, well, their, their uh, opinion has to be independent of the other people's opinions. Now, if you remember about how we uh, proved independence with, uh, uh, with a uh, binomial distribution, what we did, what we did was we said, um, in order for us to assume independence, our sample size has to be smaller than 10% of the population. Okay? So this is our 10% condition here, okay? Our 10% condition tells us independence. And then finally, is the normal model appropriate? Well, this thing says that our sample size can't be too big. This thing says our sample size also can't be too small. This is the condition that says NP and NQ better both be at least 10. Because if they're not, then the normal model is not a good uh, 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 estimator of the binomial model, and so when we divide that by n, we also don't have a good, a good normal model. So each of these conditions must be met. Now it's time to look at the distribution of the sample mean. Okay, now when talking about a sample mean, this time x has a, we don't know. We don't know what kind of distribution it has. We don't know if it has a geometric model, or a binomial model, or some sort of a, a gamma distribution, or a Poisson distribution, or there's lots and lots of different models out there. We have no idea what kind of model X has. It could be continuous, it could be discrete. <sighs> so, let's just not go there, okay? However, we do know that the expected value of X is mu, the mean, that the variance of X is sigma squared, and the standard deviation of X is sigma. Okay. Now we're looking for the sample mean. That is to say, we've taken a sample of our population, and we're we're uh, this time we're uh, uh, calculating the mean of some trait of that uh, of that population. So let's say again we're uh, uh, taking a sample of the U.S. population and we're measuring IQ. Okay. Uh, we're gonna see what the, uh, we're going to estimate the average IQ for all Americans. Uh, so that would be, that would be mu, okay? And we're going to estimate it using X bar, our sample mean. Okay, how do you calculate a sample mean? Well, you take all of your measurements, you add them all up, and then you divide by the number that you got, okay? So, hey, look, all of our measurements added up. Cool, okay? So, uh, in order to um, calculate the, now remember, x bar, the sample mean, is a random variable, okay? And so we're going to be finding the expected value of x bar and the variance of x bar and the standard deviation of x bar. So first off, let's find the expected value of what would happen if I summed up all these, uh, uh, these random variables. Well, we know what that is. The expected value of the sum is the sum of the expected values. So that's just going to be mu plus mu plus mu plus mu plus mu. It's just going to equal n times mu. All right? The variance, same thing. Remember, when you, sum, when you take the variance of the sum of random variables, it's the sum of the variance. So that means we would have sigma squared plus sigma squared plus sigma squared plus sigma squared plus... It's just going to be n times sigma squared. And uh, uh, the standard deviation is the square root of the variance. Okay. So, now, again, what is the sample mean? It's 1 over n times this sum that I was just talking about. So what that means is the expected value of the sample mean is going to be 1 over n times this, uh, uh, this uh, uh, mean here. And that's 1 over n times n over n times mu, which is just the n's cancel out and you just end up with mu again. We'll get to what that means in a second. The variance of x bar, if you remember, the variance of a constant times a random variable is that constant squared 
times the variance of the random variable. So that means it's going to be 1 over n squared times this variance here. So that's 1 over n squared times n sigma squared, and that just comes out to be sigma squared over n. And the standard deviation is the square root of the variance, and so it's just going to be sigma over the square root of n. So let's talk for a second about what we just, what we just calculated here and what that means. Well, think about it. The expected value of x bar is mu. That's, that's not all that you know, earth shattering. Uh, I'm trying to find the average, uh, the average IQ of all the Americans, okay? Of all 300 million of us. So what do I do? I take a bunch of samples and I take the averages of those samples. Well, what would, what would the average of all those averages be? The average that I'm looking for. It just, it, it, for me, it makes intuitive sense, okay? If you have a whole bunch of sample means, that the mean of those means would be the mean of the entire population. Now, let's think about the distribution. When we're looking at IQs, and we're looking all across America, we're going to have some people with really high IQs, some people with significantly less impressive IQs. Okay, So there's going to be this wide variation. Now, let's say we're looking at a sample size of 100, and we're taking the sample mean of, that, of those 100 people. Well, I don't think that I'm going to have 100 geniuses. So I don't think I'm going to have a really huge uh, average up here. And I also don't think I'm going to have 100 morons. So I don't think I'm going to have this really, really low average down here. It's going to be something a lot closer to the true mean. Well, what we find is the standard deviation of our sample mean is the standard deviation of the population divided by the square root of n. So what that tells me is if I'm looking at a sample size of 100, the standard deviation of my distribution has been cut into tenths, okay? So it's, gonna, it's not going to be nearly as volatile as, as the, the population as a whole, which, like I said, that actually makes intuitive sense to me. Now, um, this also has conditions. First off, how did we find these people? Randomly, I hope. Okay? There must be random selection, just like with our sample proportion. There must be independence, just like with our sample proportion. Okay? If we're sampling without distribution, which is generally the case, the 10% condition must be met. Okay? That is to say, our sample size must be less than 10% of our population. And then, there's the weird condition. Is N large enough? Now, for the sample proportion, we had a, a really nice uh, rule of thumb that we would follow that says if NQ and NP are both at least 10, yes, N is large enough. Here, we're just asking, is N large enough? So what I ask is that you have patience, and in a few more videos, we'll better define what this means. For now, suffice it to say, if the distribution of our original data is weird, like if it's really skewed to one side or something like that, then n is going to have to be pretty big. Okay, We're going to have to have quite a few people in there to make our sample mean start looking nice and normal. Because again, this is just asking, is the normal model appropriate? Just like with our sample proportion. Okay, Now, if we start with data that, our population data, that is unimodal and fairly symmetric and kind of looks like it's almost normal to start with, n doesn't have to be big at all. Okay? Uh, if, it's, if it's unimodal and symmetric, n can be quite small, and uh, you'll still have a sample mean that is quite normally distributed. All right? Okay, one last thing I want to talk about, and uh, that is uh, a lot of times when we're, uh, when we're taking samples, we talk about standard deviation, uh, and we talk about the mean, and in the, the process of calculating our sample mean, we assume that we know what the standard deviation of the population is. You know, we, saw, we were using the 1 over the square root of, uh, of uh, well, we were using sig uh, sigma divided by the square root of n. Well, what if you don't know what sigma is? If you're trying to estimate what the mean is, you probably don't know what the standard deviation is either. 
So in that case, what you have to do is you have to use the standard error. Okay? So the standard error is merely uh, a, 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 an approximation of the standard of, of the uh, standard deviation. The standard error of p hat, that is our sample proportion, is if you remember the uh, the standard deviation of p hat. That's the square root of p times q over n. Well, remember, we don't know what p is. We're trying to figure out what p is. So giving me a, 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 a formula for the standard deviation of p hat that uses p is, uh, well, it's, it's a little frustrating, okay? So frequently we use a standard error instead. And what that, what we do there is, we just use p hat instead. We'll say, we're going to use p hat q hat over n. That is, instead of using the population uh, proportion of success and the population proportion of failure, we're using the sample portion of success and the sample proportion of failure. As it turns out, this standard error of, uh, of p hat, really, really close to the standard deviation of p hat. It's, it's, it's hard to get that far off. Okay? And the standard deviation of, sorry, the standard error of our sample mean? Well, again, let's remember what the standard deviation of the sample mean was. Standard deviation of the sample mean is just our population standard deviation divided by the square root of n. Okay? Uh, the standard error of x hat is, I bet you can guess what it is. We take the, uh, the sample standard deviation and we divide by the square root of n. Okay? So that's our sample error of, uh, of x bar. And um, x, this is not always as good uh, an estimator of, um, of the standard deviation as this is. This, this is quite reliable. This, eh, we're going we're gonna to see exactly what we can do to, uh, to make this a little better. Okay?